Should I start? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I, I'm all wired up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll be, I'll be light entertainment. <laughs> oh, we'll see. <laughs> Um, yes, that's my name. I'm from Chicago, and uh, the best way to reach me if you have any questions, uh, you know, either about the lectures or something else, uh, can send me an email. Um, yeah, so originally, as Marian said, I, I was planning on doing some uh, more specialized lecture on, on collider physics, uh, but uh, and then I saw that I'm probably the only lecturer Know, focusing more on the theoretical aspects of particle physics, so so I, I, so I decided to give a, a, a more general lecture. Basically, I'm going to um, so 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 just a very rough plan. I'm going to uh, go over the standard model. Okay, so uh, hopefully you you have all seen the the standard model in some form, right? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll, well, we'll see. We'll see. And uh, hopefully, but uh, hopefully, I'll, I'm, I'm. I know. I know. So I'm going to start from compatifying type two B. No, no, no. Uh, anyway, uh, so so the hopefully I'm presenting in a way that is slightly different from uh, what you learn in your particle physics core class. Okay. So. Um, this is really setting the, the stage of uh, outlining so some of the, the problems uh, or questions, open questions about the standard model, and uh, then we move on to the, the, the next topic, which is uh, what is the, the basically the current thinking about the beyond standard model, new physics. And uh, well, it depends on how fast we go. I guess this will take uh, quite a bit of time already. And in the end, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, how the to to look for those new physics at the colliders and uh, and depends on how fast we go we can even talk about other things too but uh, these are the basic uh, basic things uh, yeah okay so and I also realize that uh, probably most of you don't really work on uh, particle physics. I'm not trying to convince you to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to convince you to 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 you know, change your direction. But uh, at least I wanted to show you what are the you know what what are the some of the interesting questions uh, in in this field. Okay. Um, standard model. So we just the very very basic things. You you all know there are there are three interactions, fundamental interactions: uh, the strong, weak, and the uh, E and M, and uh, and uh, there are quarks and leptons, and uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, but let, let me just uh, briefly write the uh, write the uh, write the representations for you. It's just uh, uh, so. There are Q's. Just, just even to just set the notation. There are Q L, which, okay. Let me let me write it. U D L E uh, H. Okay. 
so so this is just a notation. These are right-handed uh, quarks, and uh, this is left-handed quarks. So so it, it's a it's a yeah. It's collectively denoting U L and D L. Okay, so left-handed, right-handed. So so imagine for the moment nobody has mass. Okay, so so that the uh, chirality is a <coughs> yeah. So so this is a, this is a very well defined. Um, so S U three C that's the the gauge symmetry for for strong interaction. S U two L and U one Y. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, so this is a. I hope this is a. This is very well known. Okay. And uh, two, one, one, two, one, two. Okay. And uh, ah, so th 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 this is a, this is the left tongue doublet, and uh, this is a. Left-hand neutrino and left-handed electron, and uh, this is the left-handed, uh, right-handed electron. Okay, right-handed left tongue. Okay, uh, and the U one Y charges are one six for the doublet, and uh, These are the quantum numbers for the relevant for the for the gauge interactions. Okay. Any questions about this? So it's a. Uh, this is a. Uh, okay. So so these things, although I write it as a as one set of uh, fermions, but there there are three generations. Okay. So there are three generations and the uh, quarks and leptons. Okay. okay. And uh, from that on, I assume you know how to write a Lagrangian, the gauge in invariant Lagrangian. Is it okay? Do I need to write it? Well, well, we'll write bits and pieces of it as we go through the more of the dynamics of standard model. Okay. All right. So, in principle, in principle, you can just go from here. And uh, write the most general Lagrangian and uh, calculate things and uh, experimental experimental data. So so that, that Lagrangian one can contain, I think roughly 20 parameters, and uh, you can fit to the the experiment with those parameters, and uh, you can do your calculation, and uh, it all work. Okay. All right. So that's the end of our lecture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so in order to, but th this is not what we do. We don't, we don't, you know, as a particle physicist, we don't really, you know, uh, well, we do this, but it's not like uh, every time you wanted to do something, start from the beginning. So it's very useful. The, the dynamics of a, uh, of a, uh, uh, in in particle physics are, are very useful. Uh, be thought about and governed by a lot of symmetries. Okay. I don't mean these symmetries. Okay. These are gauge. Uh, Invariance. I don't mean this. I mean global symmetries. And uh, so, so let, let's let's spend some time talking about it. And uh, also, the thinking about uh, global symmetries and symmetry breaking is also very useful for BSM. That's why so the standard model um, part is a, is a nice warm up to to those things. Okay. So let's see. this is what I really wanted to spend some time talking about: accidental symmetries. They are approximate. Okay. So first of all, everybody uh, knows why they are called accidental. Why are they called accidental? What symmetry is accidental? Yeah. 
in this sense, I, I, in particular, I mean that uh, these are the symmetries of low energy effective Lagrangian if I only keep finite number of terms. OK? Means that we don't expect, or we don't necessarily expect these to be exact symmetry. OK? But the symmetry breaking effect at the low energy effective Lagrangian is small. OK? So, so both. You will see that both the fact that this is accidental and that it's approximate are very important. Okay, yeah. Do you consider all global symmetries to be accidental? Well, again, you know, so, so, so if you, you write uh, a, a renormalizable Lagrangian, right? You, you see there, are, there, are, there is going to be, because that's just because of the simplicity of the Lagrangian, there are going to be accidental symmetries. Okay, now, uh, a priori you don't, you, you, you know, in, from the low energy effective field theory point of view, or from effective, or from experimentalist point of view, you know, you shouldn't expect any of them to be exact, right? They will be violated by small parameters you haven't measured yet. Right. So that's the that's the attitude. Yeah. Of course, if you are convinced that type two B is the world and you can verify, then yeah, everything is. You know which one is exact, which one is broken. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so let's get get on with it. So these are very important concepts. It's a simple but a very important. Okay, so this is a. Um, so let's first do B and uh, and L. Okay, baryon number and the lepton number. These are accidental symmetries of a uh, standard model Lagrangian. Okay, just. Uh, so these are defined as the following, I think. Uh, so these are quark. Uh, uh, we will we'll refine a little bit of this later, but uh, at this level, just uh, just accept that it is. Okay. So these are the matter fields. Uh, quarks are charged one third under baryon number, and uh, Leptons are charged on the zero, and the this is zero, and the Higgs do not charge. Okay. So these are the accidental symmetries. Okay. Broken by electroweak anomalies, but that, that's a subtle, somewhat more subtle point. At least, uh, so let's put the put the anomaly aside. These are the. This is accidental symmetries. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, these are approximate, right? Therefore, in general, uh, as an effective field theory, uh, you, you, you should also write down op operators that can potentially break this symmetry. Okay? So, one such a possibility, B and uh, L breaking uh, operator, is, uh, for example, okay, it's a higher dimensional operator. As I said, that, uh, these are the these are the uh, symmetries of a renormalizable uh, standard model Lagrangian. So one of them you can write is this. I was not being I'm not being very careful with the Lorentz structures and the color indices uh, contractions, but it looks like this. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so three quark, one lepton. Okay. Now, what's the observable effect of this operator? If there's a, if this one is large, we will not be here. Proton will decay. Okay. And uh, so this leads to proton decay. And uh, the limit on proton decay uh, lifetime. So by the way, this is what uh, they do. You you get a swimming pool, and uh, you know you, you 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 will never wait for for such a long long time, right? Okay. 
the, the way to do this is you get a swarming pool and uh, you know you, you hope for that uh, a lot of them, even though the one decay probability for each one of them is very small, but since you have a, a lot of them, you may be able, to be able to see one of those decay. Okay, so, and the lifetime is, is about this. Okay, so you can roughly do, it, do a calculation from this, okay, on the lifetime of proton. So the way to do it is inverse lifetime is what we call the width of proton. Oh, what's the unit of width? GeV <laughs> mass. And uh, so it has to be proportional to this uh, operator square. Right, so 1 over m to the fourth. And that this doesn't look like the right unit. So have to be something upstairs has to make up the unit. So what's upstairs? The only other dimension for quantity is proton mass. Okay, so m proton. Okay, that's roughly the, the lifetime given this operator. And there are some pi's and so on. Well, since this is a you know, formal theory, Tazi school, we work in the unit, the pi equal to one. Okay? <laughs> so, um, all right. Anyway, so this, if you plug in, you do a slightly better calculation, and uh, this is roughly speaking 10 to the 15 GeV. Okay? So this is what kills the first generation ground unification series, by the way. They, they, have, they have this operator, but uh, they unify around the 10 to the 14 GeV scale. So, so this will give you the proton lifetime. Too short. Um, but yeah, so but uh, uh, greater than that, roughly speaking, is still a lot. Okay. okay. So we may come back to that later, but right now let's just uh, stay with it where it is. The next set of symmetry is that uh, there are lots of fields, right? There are what I said is there are three generations of quark and leptons, okay? So, so these are called the flavors. Right? I don't know why it's called the flavors, but it is called the flavor. Okay? And just like this is called the color and something. Flavor and... Okay. There's something called the odor too, I think. Called the smell too. By, by, by... By, by, by Bob Holden, I think. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stick. So, all right, flavor, okay. But so we expect there will be flavor symmetries, okay. So let, let's talk about flavor symmetries. So B and L is a symmetry that you expect modular anomaly. You expect to be preserved at to a very high degree. Okay, this is this is just saying that this operator is very very small. The contribution is completely irrelevant for. You know, most of the experiment you do, you, know, you need to build a very sensitive experiment to, to be able to sense it, to, 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 to detect that. Okay, flavor symmetries. So for the moment, so I suppose you know that the standard model, well, 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 we can go through it, we'll, we'll go through it, but for the moment, let's switch off all the masses. In fact, let's switch off all the uh, coupling between the, uh, Right, so, so, okay, let's just switch all those Yukawa couplings. Yukawa couplings looks like, uh, by the way, it's just, it looks like this, for example. Okay, this is what the up, upper type quark uh, gets, uh, get, gets flavor, get, get, sorry, get, gets its mass when Higgs gets a value. Okay, so this looks like a quark mass. And in principle, there are flavor indices, i and j's here. And, uh, and this, is a, this, is, this is actually a matrix, not a, uh, not, a, not a single number. Okay, but for the moment, let's switch all these off. Okay, let's set all these to be zero. Okay. The reason to do that is that uh, yeah, you, you will see, you know, it's very useful to think about the global symmetry is that you, you, f you find a global symmetry and then they're broken by a set of parameters. Okay, it's very useful to make that distinction. Right. 
And uh, so these are sometimes called the sporions of the of the symmetry. And you do after that you do a sporion analysis. You can you can you know. yeah. okay. So so let's switch off all the quark and the lepton Yukawa couplings. Um, so now it, then then we we only have kinetic terms. Okay, we only have kinetic terms. Right. The kinetic term basically go, looks like this, something like that, okay, with the with with the flavors in the CC, which you know commute with the, with the, with all the gauge rotations. Okay, so flavor symmetry in quark sector. Quark sector, okay. So how many of them? Okay, all the all the QLs. There are three three different uh, left-handed uh, uh, doublet, right? I can rotate among them, do arbitrary flavor rotations, okay? So it, it will still keep the, the this one invariant. Okay, imagine now I have flavor indices here, right? So you just do do rotations. This is invariant. So there is a U three Q. Okay, this is the flavor rotation in the in the left-handed quarks. Same, there is a there are right-handed rotations as well. They are also symmetries for the for the kinetic term. Okay, these are the flavor symmetries. Okay. Now. At this moment, at this moment, uh, so so these are the symmetries without the Yukawa coupling. Now let's switch back on Yukawa couplings. Okay. Now you turn on the sporions. Okay. So so the quark Yukawa couplings. There's a y u and then there's a y d. Okay. Up and down Yukawa couplings. So this is a, a general three by three complex matrix. This is a general three by three uh, complex matrix. Okay. So how many parameters are there? So this is a Jesus. This is a eighteen real eighteen complex, a eighteen imaginary. Okay. So eighteen real. Now think about it as a, as a as this. Okay, so it looks like I have 18 real flavor parameters, 18 uh, faces of parameters, right? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> it turns out, uh, the the answer is it's because I haven't used all the degree of freedom to to rotate away the faces. Okay, I can do flavor rotations. I can do U3 flavor rotations to get rid of parameters. Because the U3 rotation is a symmetry of a kinetic term. They only change your power coupling. Okay, I can use these two to rotate away faces. Is this okay? Okay. So let's count. Okay. So U3 Q has how many parameters? Has 18 faces. It's corresponding to 18 faces. Okay. You, you, anyway, you, you count yourself. Okay. It's 18 faces and uh, and the nine nine real parameters. Okay. And. Uh, So it looks like I should be able to get rid of nine real, uh, get rid of all the faces, okay? Except, <laughs> except there is one thing, one. Uh, so so except uh, this this sporions don't break all the symmetries, okay? It doesn't break these symmetries down to zero, okay? So. In fact, it breaks uh, 
So let's say, where, where do I say this? Ah. Okay. So let me let me write it in a in a more uh, more spray on language. Okay. So um, why why u and why d breaks? This u three cube down to doesn't down to nothing. It down to the down to the baryon number we talked about. Okay, Yukawa coupling still preserve baryon number. Okay, so one of these three phase rotations is just baryon number, and it's a symmetry of the Yukawa couplings. Therefore, you will, Yukawa coupling is invariant under that rotation. Therefore, that rotation cannot remove the phase from your color couple. Is, is that okay? Okay. So therefore, really, you can actually remove 17 phases. Okay. You can rotate away 17 phases and nine real parameters. Okay. Now we have a real counting for the number of parameters. Okay. So there are nine real parameters okay these are yeah um, these are six oh, sorry these are the, the six masses sorry six quark masses which you know, there are six quarks they all have mass so there are six parameters and there are three mixing angles. We'll talk about that. And uh, there is one phase. Okay. So these are the physical parameters, phase uh, 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 flavor parameters in the quark sector of the standard model. Is it? Face value CP. Anything else? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, have have you all seen Sporean analysis? Okay. All right. So in in a more more Sporean ish language, you you the way to think to, to the way to say this. Is that uh, suppose you, you 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 are you know you are you are used to this? I, I, uh, all I need to tell you is just that there are two sporeons, right? And uh, there are three uh, global symmetries. And uh, the sporeons transform under the global symmetry. Okay. They transform. For example, this guy transforms in the 3-3 three, three bar as a 3-3 three, three bar under this global symmetry, and uh, this transform under of a 3-3 three, three bar under this symmetry. Okay. And uh, once I froze this sporeon to its background value, it breaks this global symmetry down to U1B. Okay. So this is uh, in principle. If you are familiar with the spray analysis, this is all. This is all I need to say. Okay. So you, if you haven't seen spray analysis, learn it. It's very useful. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to. You have to know something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then have uh, additional bigger symmetries. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Uh, th these are the background field values. These are not gold stones. Yeah. So, so well, you don't you don't really literally think about this as fields. Okay. I guess it, at at least at this level. Okay. You you you. These are things has background values. Okay. In the end. Uh, so let, let let's do it in slightly more detail. Let's just uh, you know go down to a bit of detail that uh, how we do it. 
in the standard model, the flavor factor. Uh -huh. Google it yourself. <laughs> I'll mention those names. So you, 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 you hear it. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I'll do it now. So. Ah, how should I do this? Uh, uh, I'm supposed to use this, right? This, uh, Huh? Okay, I'll I'll use this just just to give it a try. So use this. Yeah. So face is a, what what I mean. Face is just that there is one CP violating parameter. In a, the the CP violation effect is controlled by one parameter. Other, on the other hand, the flavor mixing. You 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 will see what flavor mixing means. Okay, so the flavor mixing is a, is a controlled by three three rotation angles. The whole real the sign of quark mass is not physical. So, and uh, but the what what, what I'm, I'm not sure what the Yeah, it's SU3 rotation angles, basically. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it will, it will be clear. I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will try to, uh, well, at least when, when you see this, uh, where, where those angles show up. It will be slightly better, I guess. Am I supposed to use this again? E. How do I use this? So, so in detail, Again, so for example, well, I have a up and down uh, U power matrix, and uh, once I give a Higgs of F, and uh, I will rotate the upper quark left and the right, right, each with a separate uh, matrix. Sorry, let me just uh, let me write it. Okay, uh, unitary three by three matrix. So these are the let me let me call this uh, uh, hat hat and uh, this hmm? ah <laughs> this obviously doesn't make sense okay so in such a way that the Yukawa matrix 
the upper Yukawa matrix. Um, so remember that. Uh, let me let me just write this. So why you? So I'm I'm starting with a, with a, with a coupling, looks like this, right? Then the Higgs vav, U L U R. Okay, roughly speaking. Okay, so something like this. And uh, but this is a three by three matrix. Okay, with different flavors. And I'm going to diagonalize this matrix. That that that's these rotations are for. Okay, so so the the, the result is that I will get a diagonal matrix, which is basically y u, y d, no y charm, y top. Okay, these are the name of three quarks, up quarks. Okay, so uh, and uh, and uh, this is by diagonalizing it like this, the original Yukawa matrix. So an arbitrary complex three by three matrix can be diagonalized by this kind of biunitary transformation. Okay. So I'm going to do it. And, uh, and these are the mass eigenstates. And so, so these are, these turning, turns into mass. Okay, so M up, Charm at the uh, top uh, just turns into y, you know, up charm top times v basically. Okay. Right. So 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 what do, is that okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to also do this for the down sector. Okay. So th this is the down sector. I have these two rotations. So I diagonalize mass matrix. Go to mass eigenstate. Okay, so now in this in this uh, language, where does the flavor mixing effect go? Right. Of course, now you're rotating uh, the the quarks. Of course, this uh, this rotation ma uh, matrix will in general show up in in, in its in interactions. Okay. So let's consider different kind of interactions. So in the standard model, in the standard model, weak interaction. So for example. Uh, there is a coupling that is dagger. D L W plus minus. Okay, so this is the interaction from the left left handed quarks to W. Okay. Again, I'm assuming that uh, you. Well, we, we can go through this, but uh, this is just coming from the, the SU to L interaction. Okay. And after then you do do that inter do that rotation. So UL will rotate, DL will rotate, but their rotation in general don't cancel. Okay, so that rotation is not a symmetry of this interaction. Okay, the rotation I just did is not. Okay, and uh, therefore. In terms of mass matrix, mass eigenstate, I will have this. Um, sigma u. And the two rotation matrix here. Okay? And the W. So this is our flavor mixing matrix. Okay. So this this is uh, the so-called charge current. Charge current interaction because it couples to charge W boson. Okay. And uh, this is sometimes called a CKM matrix. Okay. It's a three by three unitary matrix. And uh, as we said, that uh, there are there are three mixing angles in this matrix and the one phase physical parameters. Okay. Right. 
On the other hand, I can also so so standard model also have couplings to neutral gauge bosons to right so to for to for hypercharge and so on, right so there is a, there are couplings of both left and the right and uh, and it goes like this and uh, to a mu okay and uh, these are the neutral gauge bosons. A mu can be either W3 or B. Okay, so it's the diagonal generator of SU2 or the hypercharge gauge boson. These are all neutral, that's why you don't couple to D, okay, because they have a different uh, electric charge. Okay, you only couples to U. On the other hand, these things, those rotations, are the symmetries of these interactions. Okay? So therefore, e e even after you go to the go to the uh, mass eigenstate base, it stays the same. Yeah. Uh, let me just write it like that. Okay. So so this is uh, another thing. This is called a uh, no flavor. changing neutral current. No flavor changing neutral current. This is called the fl well, if, 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 if this can switch flavor, it's called the flavor changing neutral current. But no flavor changing neutral current in the standard model at the tree level. Okay, I have only proved it to tree level. And uh, and it's in general it's not true, but, uh, but in tree level it's true. Okay, and uh, yeah, and the tree level is true is very important. It means that any effect, flavor changing neutral current effect will be small, will be loop induced, will be uh, suppressed by additional small couplings and loop factors. Okay, so this is a very important fact. Any questions with the flavor mixings? Uh, this picture has been tested a lot. Okay, it works very well. Okay, so of course the way to do this is to value, to to observe various things that can change flavor, very flavor changing effect, and uh, and uh, and because those effects are small, you make a lot of them. Okay, and because these are quarks, and you don't really see quarks. At the low energy, you see mesons, but the mesons also carries the flavor of quarks. You see the flavor changing uh, effect from the mesons, and uh, these are has been tested very well. Let's just say, okay. So, so basically, one of the one set of tests is basically just test uh, what what I said is in this three ver three flavor thing that uh, this is a unitary matrix. Okay, you can you can one way to phrase the test is that you, you can test how unitary this matrix is. You try to measure its various elements, and you wanted to see whether it's actually satisfy the relation from a unitary matrix. Sometimes this is called a unitarity triangle measurement. So yeah. Uh, what does it tell you? Huh? What it does it tell me? Uh, this means that I'm missing a flavor, for example. Okay. There, there's something else, right? So I have a. Uh, well, in my notes, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put my notes online. There, there are some current uh, figures, but it's a, uh, yeah. Okay, but let, let's just talk about one of the things that's uh, that's con received the strongest constraint of flavor, uh, no, test the best in uh, in the standard model, which is k on mixing. Anybody knows what a k on is? It's a meson. <laughs> okay. By the way, here here's a test. With a, here's a test. I'm not sure whether I can pass myself. Okay. Here's a test of whether you you, under, you you say you understand understand standard model, right? So, and uh, the real test is to open up particle data group. Uh, uh, you, you know, there's something called a particle data group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> uh, open up that. Uh, see how many pages you can understand. Okay. 
just just roughly, okay, I'm not asking you to calculate everything, but how many pages you can understand. So I'm sure you will run into case. <laughs> I don't know, meson summary tables, uh, lepton sum summary tables, uh, just the review section, yeah. <laughs> it's good to read the review sections. <laughs> uh, okay, k-on mixing. K-on are the mesons uh, made up by, by well, neutral k-on mixing is what I mean. It is made by down and the strange quarks, okay? So k-on mixing is uh, uh, ds, roughly speaking, goes to s and d. Okay, this is my initial state, this is my final state. All right, so, and, uh, um, so then uh, a diagram that contributes to k on mixing goes like this, okay? We know that it cannot come from a w, a Z and a Z and a, and a photon exchange because they preserve flavor. It has to come from the W, w boson exchange. Okay, and at one loop. Okay, so these guys are U and the C and the T. Okay, all possible uh, standard model upper type quark, up type quarks. Okay, U, C, and the T. Okay, and uh, and so the this operator you you can. So, so k on is is very light, okay. So uh, you you talk about effective field theory of k on. You can integrate out the w and the, and the top and so on. Okay. So the, the effective operator of this mixing is a, is described by the following operator. I guess I'm not working in the pi equal to one unit, but th this is the loop factor, 16 pi square, uh, the, the, the loop factor. Uh, Sum over i. Okay, I'll, I'll say what. The, yeah, so over i, and uh, i equals to u c and t, and uh, m u i square, m w to the fourth. Okay, m w to the fourth is, is simple to understand. I hope because. It's there are these just these, these two W propagators. Okay, at a very low energy, each of them gave you one over mW square, and uh, and uh, these these are the vertices. These are the vertices that's uh, coming from uh, coming from this. Okay, from the charge current interaction. So 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 it has to involve. Basically, involve this mixing angle, the, the matrix element of this guy. Okay, so you can see that this is a V I D star V I S square. Okay, matrix element, matrix element, matrix element, matrix element. There are four matrix elements, so we need to package it into this, and uh, and uh, this is a Operator looks like because it's all left-handed. So this is the operator. Okay. Okay. So, and the, this operator has, of course, has been very well tested. It contributes to the the fact that the delta m k, so there are two neutral k on state, and the, this uh, this is the off off diagonal matrix element in their mass matrix basically, and it splits those two states, and uh, and uh, sorry, this is no unit, <laughs> okay, it's this, okay, this has been very well tested. Um, so, but let, let me let me also point point to you that uh, there is some interesting fact. Okay, there is a, a, a quark mass here. Okay, remember, the, look, there's a quark mass here. Okay, so so imagine that I'm in the limit of 
which is not true in the standard model, in the limit, and the U quark and the C quark and the top quark has the same mass. Okay, suppose I'm in this limit. Okay? And this matrix element is zero. Okay? Because this is a, you know, this is a, then this becomes exactly V times V dagger square of diagonal limit, of diagonal. Right, so I can factor out this MUI and uh, and this sums to zero. Okay, so this is uh, easy to understand, easier to understand in in terms of uh, symmetry language. Okay, because in this limit there is an enhanced symmetry, there's an enhanced flavor symmetry. Okay, I, I recovered some of the flavor symmetry that I broken uh, with Yukawa couplings. Okay. So, in fact, in this limit, I have a additional. I have, I have a new flavor symmetry, which is not left, not right, but there is diagonal subgroup. Okay, left, right. Yeah, because I already turned on the quark mass, so it's the SU three, SU three diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in the end, uh, you have to match this matrix element into into a, into a Masonic uh, uh, state. Okay. Yeah, but that, that 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 that's controllable. You you can measure that parameter somewhere else, or you can do a lattice calculation that, uh, <laughs> to do that. Yes. You do, but uh, that that's controllable. Um, okay, and uh, the fact that uh, these are the, these are the, this effect is vanishing in this limit. In or said it the other way, the fact that the size of this effect is controlled by the difference in the quark mass. Okay, you can understand. You know, the the, the size of this effect is controlled by the difference of quark mass. This is called a gym, gym mechanism. Okay. So in fact, people guessed what the mass of strange quark is, just you know, based on this. Chum chum. I don't know what I'm saying. Charm quark. <laughs> yes, just based on this effect. Yeah. Huh? Nobody believe it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. But this is called the, uh, I think, what is this? Um, uh, Glashow Ilianopoulos uh, Mayani uh, mechanism. Okay. Okay. So, but uh, let, let me, so, so there, Again, uh, let me emphasize again that all these flavor structure uh, is tested very, very well, and uh, we're still going keep testing it, going to even further. And uh, and uh, there's always uh, if you look for anomalies, there is always some potential anomalies in this test, but none of them uh, turns out to be there. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, but it's very, very well. At least this is a very, very close to 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 the to the actual uh, story. Okay, but this is a standard model. Okay, standard model again. I will say the the story is I have these flavor symmetries, and the flavor symmetry is only broken by the sporions of Yukawa coupling. Okay, so that's the standard model. Uh, on the other hand, you can also Im Im imagine there are irrelevant operators give you additional source of flavor violation. Okay, so so this is a Additional, you know, additional flavor violation by irrelevant operators, right? Just like I can break a baryon lepton number by writing down additional 
irrelevant operators. I can also do this with flavor. So again, so for example, you can imagine there are flavor, there are operators like this. Okay. Again, I'm not very careful with the Lorentz structures and. Uh, in the season, so on. But there are you can in, you can you can write an, a number of operators with a, with a, with a, with four different flavors. Okay, this is consistent with all the standard model gauge symmetries and so on. Right. Obviously, these things will contribute to observables like k on mixing as well. In fact, k on mixing is actually the, one of the, the 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 things that give you the strongest limit on operators like this. So k on mixing means that m is greater than okay five order magnitude above the the weak scale. So okay, so we'll, we'll come back to this effect, th these facts. Okay, these are all very important when you think about the beyond standard model new physics, right? Because these are obvious uh, constraints. leptons. I talked about quarks and then and, and I can go go faster with leptons. Is, is this reasonable? Can you read this? Okay. I don't need to. So y e is 3 3 bar under left hand rotation Right hand rotation. Okay? Now let's for the moment let's ignore neutrino mass. At the moment let me ignore neutrino mass. Okay? Because that's something different. Okay. Um, imagine your neutrino has a very small mass. Imagine its effect is very small. Um, then this Yukawa coupling, this sporion breaks this flavor flavor symmetry. Okay, and uh, it's slightly different. This Yukawa coupling, so U three square by this Yukawa coupling, it breaks down to three separate separate lepton numbers. You, you can do the counting that uh, you know you can you can uh, yeah so there are three separate preserved lepton numbers electron lepton number muon lepton number uh, tau lepton number and then you can you can count that these uh, these uh, rotations are enough to remove all the uh, faces in this Yukawa coupling okay all the faces in this Yukawa coupling. And uh, there are only three real parameters in this case, okay? Which is the, the mass of those three guys. Okay. That these are only the only uh, yeah, these are the only physical parameters without neutrino mass. Okay, so just uh, Okay, but now we we know neutrino has mass, so let's talk about neutrino mass. Okay. Yeah. What do I do with this?
OK， 好，现在是。So, so the most obvious way to do neutrino mass is just do it in the same way as the as the as the quark mass, right? So you you already see the problem here. The difference between the neutrino and the neutrino and the quark is the there's a right hand quarks, but there's no right right hand neutrinos. Okay, I haven't added right hand neutrinos. Why? Because I don't know whether they are there or not. Okay. Right hand neutrinos, unlike right hand quarks, they are the right hand neutrinos does not have any interactions in the standard model. Does not have any standard model gauge interactions. So um, in order to see it is very difficult. But nevertheless, let me just say, okay, suppose I added add a right hand neutrino. Okay. First way to have a neutrino mass is to add add a right hand neutrino. Okay? Uh, let me call it uh, neutrino. Let, let me call it. Let me call it n. Okay. So it's then, in, in in addition to uh, to the to the electron Yukawa coupling, now I can write another Yukawa coupling with the right hand neutrino. Okay. Then the similar st the story in this case is very very almost identical with uh, with the standard model. Uh, with the standard model quarks, okay. So again, there are two two Yukawa couplings, three U three symmetries. So suppose I add three right-handed neutrinos. Okay. Suppose I just add three right-handed neutrinos. Okay. Then the story is literally identical with the. It's isomorphic to the story of quarks. And uh, so that's fine. And uh, but on the other hand, you know, the, you may be bothered by the fact that the neutrino mass is very very small. Okay, neutrino mass. What's neutrino mass? Hmm. Used to be, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's it's much lower than that now. So uh, the answer is we don't know. <laughs> we, we we have some hint. Uh, the, I think it has to be less than 0.1 eV, in you know. So, but we don't know its absolute value. We, we know its mass difference. We know two mass differences and there's some mixing angles, but but we don't quite know the overall scale of neutrino mass. There's some the, the 0.1 eV is from uh, from cosmology bound from structure formations. So, but if you you bother by the fact this is very very small. You maybe maybe I can we can uh, um, think about the neutrino mass is actually coming from irrelevant operators. Okay, so so let's do it with irrelevant operators. This is called I think it's called a Weinberg operator. Something it's that uh, I don't know what. Yeah, it's L H square. Okay, it's that operator. So this is a doublet. This is a doublet. You can form a, a singlet and just square it. Okay, and uh, this is dimension five. So this is one over m. This is the lowest dimensional, one of the lowest dimensional irrelevant operator you can write for the standard model. Okay. Um, right. So in order to give neutrino mass, suppose that my aim is to give neutrino mass 0.1 eV. And uh, the, this this scale has to be about uh, ten to the ten to the twelve to ten to the thirteen GeV. Okay. So which is uh, okay reasonable? I don't. You know. um, and in this case, in this case, ho however, it's different because you notice that the lepton number there's no lepton number anymore. Th this Term violate the lepton number. Okay, so in this case, the symmetry breaking is u three squared down to nothing. Okay, lepton number is not preserving. Okay, so the one way of one way of distinguish these two possibilities is to see whether there are lepton number violating processes. Okay, again, but the, the, because the neutrino mass is tiny, this is very difficult. 
Okay, so one of the future target targets for future experiment is to test which one is correct. Okay, so. Um, but either way, now we have flavor rotations. Flavor rotations becomes uh, become physical again. Okay. Either way, now now we have uh, um, now we have in, 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 instead of uh, uh, CKM, there is some other matrix called the PMNS matrix, which is basically the combination of the left-handed rotation of a neutrino and uh, and uh, and uh, and the charge lepton. Okay, it's very again pretty similar to 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 the quark sector. And uh, they also have a three mixing angles, one CP phase. Okay, in this case, and uh, in general, uh, well, this is much less well measured than uh, than a quark because measure measuring neutrino is very difficult. Um, we have pretty good ideas of how, how big those three angles are. We don't know the size of that CP violation angle yet. Okay? Although I will be surprised if, the, if it's a zero. So uh, let's just say. So we have seen it done, done it once in the quark sector. There's no, seems to me that there's no reason to assume CP is a good symmetry for the for neutrino, yes. It's a uh, well. We can go back, come back to this naturalness question later. But uh, you know, neutrino mass somehow bothers people much more than <laughs> than the rest. Of, I mean, for the rest of it, you can also write higher dimensional operators. Try to try to. Uh, um, th there are actually papers written, you know, by you know, and uh, and there are other limits on those models and so on. But and uh, but th this is a. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think. Because point 0.1 eV is really much smaller than 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 the, so so if you look at the, well, it's hard to see. It's it's hard to say what it, what, what, what which which hierarchy one should be really be bothered by. But and anyway, oh, by the way, sorry, neutrino is the only possibility you can actually write this operator. <laughs> okay, the other things you don't, you cannot write this operator. You can write other higher dimension operators to give give you mass. So that that's also, it's, it's a little bit harder to do it for the other operator, other other masses. Okay, so let me, so of course, just like a quark uh, flavor violation, we can also uh, test the lepton flavor violation. Okay, there are also lepton flavor violation measurements. So. And uh, and uh, all all this this picture can also be violated by irrelevant operators. So the one set of irrelevant operators is, uh, for example, this. Okay. So these are the L and J, and uh, this is a doublet, a doublet uh, form, and then this is a gauge invariant. This okay. So this is a, it's almost the same as Yukawa coupling, except I have this and these guys. Yeah, the, okay. Um, and also I can have uh, operators like, uh, for example, Li. Yeah, just A and B, and the, the, these are different flavors. I can also have these kind of operators. Okay. So. These operators can be tested by, you know, observing mu goes to e gamma. So mu mu on usually don't decay that way, okay? But this is a, has to be a very rare decay mode of mu on. But you can try to observe that. Also, you can observe see whether mu on goes to three e. Okay. So let's see e plus e minus. Okay, you can try to observe that. Okay, so these things all constrain the, these parameters. Roughly speaking, this tells you that uh, 
m needs to be greater than okay so slightly less stringent than the k-on mixing constraint k-on mixing is 10 to the 7 GeV this is 10 to the 5 Any questions about this? This is all we want to say about flavor physics. So this is a, I mean, there are there is mountains of literature <laughs> in flavor physics, and uh, I, I think uh, this is just an a overview of uh, what, yeah. So the bottom line is, standard model has a very specific structure of flavor, and uh, and uh, they have been tested very well. Okay, except uh, except perhaps uh, there is a one parameter here in the in the in the neutrino sector still needs to be determined. Okay. So, and uh, any additional flavor violation effect it has to be fairly strongly suppressed. Okay. The, su the suppression scale is, uh, you know, from 100 TeV to from, uh, you know, 10,000 TeV. Okay. So, okay. How much time I still have? I don't know what the. Oh. Okay. Let me let me just uh, tell you what I'm what I'm going to do next. Okay. So. Uh, next time we'll we'll start to begin by talking a little bit about the QCD. The the theory of uh, of strong interactions. And. Uh, and it's SU and gauge theory with the. Uh, with vector-like quarks and so on. Um, and uh, what's interesting about the QCD is that uh, there is a, a scale where where there's a phase transition happens. Okay, so that scale, which is called lambda QCD, is about GeV. Okay, above that I have a series of uh, I, I have a series of quarks and gluons. And uh, well, it's very difficult, as you learn from a uh, 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 lens uh, lecture. But in principle, you can do perturbative calculation to predict uh, observables. Okay. Uh, around the GeV, I think only Tom knows what's going on. And uh, below GeV, though, around the hundred MeV. Okay. Then, then this is a series of pions. Okay, so this is around the MeV. This is a series of pions, and uh, there you actually can do perturbation theory again. Okay, so it's a, it's called a chiral perturbation theory. So next time we will talk a little bit uh, about the chiral perturbation theory, not because uh, you know we wanted to dig into any details of our chiral perturbation theory. It's again a very deep topic, very difficult. But I wanted to. It, 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 there are some certain concepts there is useful for later on. We're talking about the rest of the standard model and the BSM. So 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 I will, will go over a little bit about the chiral perturbation theory, uh, how to you know how to describe pions. Okay. Yeah, so CP violation, you know, we, we, we can we can definitely we can just talk about CP violation, but uh, you know, for example, okay, there are, there are many CP violation operators that uh, you can write, you know, for example, this is this violates CP, okay, and um, well, if I make this into quarks, not not, uh, not then it becomes a, a dipole moment a type of operator that that violates CP, and uh, so standard model. Yeah, so, so I should say that, that there, are, there are also very stringent tests of CP violations in the, if, from the standard model and the, and the beyond standard model. So the k-on mixing, for example, you can also test CP violation in k-on system. 
that has also that also give you uh, one of the strongest constraints on any of these CP violating operators you can add to the standard model. Uh, you can also test, uh, for example, this kind of operator give you uh, electrodipole moment of electrons, and you, also, you can also test that. And uh, in standard model, it's tiny, okay? And it has to involve quarks, higher loop involve quarks. As, you know, uh, uh, and but uh, in, in BS, B, B, beyond standard model models, this can actually be, be quite big. And in fact, that's also, also another strong constraint. <laughs> On the, uh, the type of BSM series that you can write. Okay. Yeah, I was asking about the extra phase plus over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, the, if you want, uh, there is a phase in the in the CKM matrix. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So if you when, when you when you construct this, you, when you calculate uh, these operators from the standard model, that phase will enter. And that's not a very good way of saying. A good way of saying it is you can actually construct a, a phase rotation invariant, CP violation, uh, and out of Yukawa couplings, and uh, and uh, you can you can you can construct sorry you can construct the invariant out of Yukawa couplings, and uh, and the flavor invariant flavor rotation invariant uh, out of Yukawa couplings that's CP violating, and uh, then then it really depends doesn't depend on whether you go to the mass space or not. And, uh, and you can show that all these standard model uh, CP violation in fact is proportional to that invariant. It's called the Yauskov invariant. Okay. So it has to involve three generation of quarks and so on. So therefore it's uh, suppressed by the light quark mass. So it's, it's pretty small. So again, so it, CP is not a good symmetry of a standard model, just like a flavor. But the, the violation in fact is, is very well controlled and uh, given by a set of sporions. Okay. Now, and uh, and uh, these are setting very strange constraint on any BSM model. So. Yeah. Uh, so what is known about the CP? It's neither fourth nor nor mass number. Is it the first order of magnitude? No. So th th uh, we'll, we'll have a poetic uh, sketch of chiral perturbation theory next time. <laughs> <laughs>